happy welcome, bicycle brethren. Today we're in Gran Premio Pienza. I haven't completed this race for three weeks. In April I did it about six times. My best time was over 51 minutes. But three weeks ago on the 5th of May I did it in just over 48. So that's the target I'm going for. The description says, fancy some Tuscan sun? Well here we have a fantastic loop in the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Pienza. Racing on this loop is fast and fierce. The course is full of vineyards and the typical villas of the area. Races will be dominated by the main climb. You will need to bring your climbing legs with you as it's key to doing well. Although being a short punchy climb, it can suit a variety of riders. Not if you're 84 kilograms, but it's still fun. Push it and make those behind you watch you disappear. So the lap begins here and it climbs up to here, which is a city or town of Pienza in Tuscany. That's where the lap begins on the profile. It goes up this hill to this point here, which is Pienza, checkpoint city. It's a beautiful city. From there we go downhill to here and then uphill to that point, which is there, that bit to there. And then from here it's downhill to there and then it's relatively flat back to the start of the lap here, which is that section. Right, it's time to join the race. We've only got two minutes. Two minutes to kick off. Let's see who's joined us. Just over a minute to go, one minute five. 18 humans, I like that. 15 seconds to go. Start warming up. Power's connected. 10 seconds. Wish me luck. We are go. There's no point trying to get into the front group on this race because it starts with the hill. So just go at your own comfortable pace. There's no very little drafting to be had at this stage of the race. I'm already 50 metres behind Tim, the next human up the road. If I don't catch up with him, that's him, the white dot in the distance just around the bend, just up there. The thing about these hilly races, I don't mind letting the others get away from me on the first lap. It gives me someone to chase. I find that a lot of people often go off too quick to begin with. But I would like to challenge my PB on this course. So I need to do 16 minute laps. So although it says I'm 17th, you can see on the road I'm actually behind Olivia. But on the left it says I'm ahead. Just a bit of a glitch. Um, I can't remember which is true. I think the picture is true. So if the finish line happened now, I think she would win. Coming up to one kilometre, nearly four minutes. One k. This is my worst part of the of the lap is the uphill bit. So I might lose time here but I might gain it somewhere else. And I also expect some of them have gone off too hard too early. And I will improve. So Mark and Tim are together at 150 meters ahead of me. I wonder if there's anyone else with them. No. The next one ahead of them is Rob who's about 200 meters ahead. And he's level with Guy and Aquiles. And then there's Stephen B, 100 meters further on from them. So I've had my warm up. Now I'm getting my heart rate up. And the gap to Tim and Mark has come down a little bit. Still a long way to go, so no panic yet. 
kilometers, 18 humans in this race, which is much nicer than, than it was earlier. I think 20 is optimal. If you get 100 or more, then you don't know who you're racing against until you're over halfway. Because the names on the left just keep on changing. There's just too much going on. When you've got 20 riders, that's about right, I reckon. Top of the hill, start going down here now. When the power's red in the top left corner, then I'm wasting energy. So I've got to keep my eye on that. My little man is putting on his brakes when he comes up to corners. So I'll gain nothing if I carry on pedaling hard. I just lose energy. That's the time to recover. There's a sharp corner. No point pedaling there. Another one here. Now that's the bottom of the hill. 80 meters behind the front, the two in front of me. So then there's 500 meters up the road to Rob. So, hmm, I'll do well to catch him. Grey dots on the profile graph in the top right. I'm the United Kingdom flag in the middle. Just to the right is a grey dot that indicates Mark and Tim. And then the other grey dots on the right are riders who are further ahead. So you see there's quite a big gap there. The front four are all French and they're over two kilometers ahead of me. In fact they're all together. Two and a quarter kilometers ahead. Because of my weight this is where I gain on my opponents. I descend faster and I do well on the flats as well. So we've got our flatter section coming up at the bottom of this hill. That's where I hope to make my gains. I've just gone past Mark. There's quite a gap now between Tim and Mark. So Rob is on my screen now. 440 metres ahead. I can close that. I don't know if I will. I need to get my heart rate up to 160. At this pace, my overall time is going to be 54, 55 minutes, which is pretty slow compared to my other times. Very slow compared to my PB, 48 minutes. This front four going crazy. Damien in second is above 8 watts per kilogram consistently, and the others aren't far behind that. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe they have e-bikes. Or maybe they've told the computer that their weight is 40 kilograms. I think the minimum is 40 or 45 kilograms. So if I'd done that as well, then my watts per kilogram right now would be around 6. And I'd be up with them. I'm going to have a look to see where Stephen is well ahead of me. 9.6k. Well, he's nearly a kilometre ahead. I'm not going to catch Stephen today. This is the lowest graphic setting. I do this just just to give my laptop less work to do. It's not just running RGT, it's also recording the screen. I've got Aquiles and Rob down to 110, 120 metres. Happy about that. Confident I'll catch them. I don't think I'll catch Guy. He's 300 meters ahead of them. There's two grey dots on the right of my profile graph. Uh, probably Guy and Finbar. Yeah, I think it's Guy and Finbar, about 100 meters apart. Stevens, half a kilometer ahead of Finbar. 
Stephen's at 12.6, I'm at 10.9, so he's a mile ahead of me now. So there's Rob, he was well ahead at one point, but I'm right with him again. Jesus. <laughs> Tim's just gone past me. I'm going to use your draft. Get back past you. And now the next two ahead of me, Finbar and Guy. Guy, 560 meters. He's going downhill. Maybe I'll catch Guy. And I am 450 behind Guy, 500 behind Finbar. Can I close that? Stephen is well ahead. I'm not going to be racing him today. But I might catch Finbar and Guy. He's asking a lot, but you never know. They might have gone hard at the start and be paying for it now. So my first lap was just over 18 minutes. What's this one going to be? I'm now focused on Guy and Finbar. 300 meters up the road. Under 17 minutes for the lap. That's good. Steven is a long way ahead of them. I wonder if he's racing anyone. Nope. <laughs> he's all alone. I've got my eyes on these two. I think I can catch them. If I can get their lead down to 100 meters at the top of the hill, maybe I can close that gap in the second half of the lap where well, I've got an advantage so my watts per kilogram is around 4 and theirs is around 3 so even though the distance isn't going down I think the time gap is it's just that I'm on a steeper section than I was earlier relative to them you have to do all sorts of maths in your head in these races. I wish I just knew the time gaps as well as the meters. This is where the race is won and lost. Who can suffer the most on the hill? I know I'm in the same gear the whole time and these guys might have smart turbos where they're having to change gear constantly. That gives me an advantage but I just think I didn't want to spend hundreds of pounds extra on a turbo that changes resistance. I thought of it as a gimmick at the time and I kind of still do. I still enjoy this, riding in the same gear the whole time. It's not just a measure of fitness. There's a lot of tactics going on here. see the sweat is real and the heart rate is real the suffering is real up the hill 150 meters behind Guy and Finbar are they worried yet? still got 4.7 kilometers to go and they're only 130 ahead of me I've got to work hard now 4k to go 4.1 kilometers to go if I'm to catch these two, I've got to do something special on this little hill. I'll probably see them in a minute. Because they're now on the hill. There they are. 60 metres ahead. 50 metres ahead. Going uphill. 30 metres ahead. Come on! This is 10th place here. I really want to get ahead of them before the descent. I don't want to help them down the hill. <laughs> Guy's helping me up the hill. Saving 35 watts. Two and a half kilometers to go. Mostly flat. Finbar's 60 meters behind. I'm attacking. I don't want to give him any draft. So now Stevens <laughs> on my
my screen 800 meters ahead. I'm not going to close that with just over two kilometers to go. I'm not going to catch Stephen. Just got to keep my eye on Guy. 80 meters ahead of Guy. 1.4 kilometers to go. I think he's going to fancy his chances if the gap is less than 50 meters going into the final sprint. Final 500. Nowhere near my PB. <laughs> 48 minutes. 50. 51 minutes gone, 250 meters to go. I've got a lead over guy of 100 meters. I'm just rolling in now. No point killing myself. There it is. There's Stephen waiting for me. 16 minutes for the lap, 16.06. That's what I want to do every lap. <laughs> I think um, Guy just waved at me then. Did anyone see me getting top 10? <laughs> Where was I at the start? 17th? people often start too strong. <sighs> Stephen, Thomas, you were gaining on me. I had to pick it up a little. <laughs> You're joking. I was never in it. <sighs> Cheerio. Apple Tuesday. <laughs>